People always say that you have to have money to make money and that there's an extraordinary level of sacrifice on the road to success. So how is it that investors like us who didn't start out with much money and who don't rely on banks and credit, how is it that we can increase our income and build our wealth in a way that doesn't require us replacing one full-time job with another while still enjoying the things in life that matter most to us? That has always been the big question, and this podcast reveals the answers. I am Carrie Lake, and this is The Investor Warrior. Warriors, thank you for joining us today. If you're watching this live stream, it's Friday, so TGIF to everyone out there. If you're listening to this on the podcast, I don't know what day of the week it is, but... I hope you're having a great day. Uh, today I have on the show with me Eric Martell. And Eric is the author of Stop Trading Your Time for Money. And I'm excited to have him on because we talk a lot about this on the podcast is trading our time for money, why we invest in real estate and what the vehicle of real estate investing can ultimately give us, right? Because we're not just doing it for fun. There's a goal in mind when we're investing in real estate, and that goal is financial freedom. So, Eric, thank you so much for coming on um, with us today and sharing your journey and your wisdom with the uh, the listeners. Well, thank you for having me on, Carrie. Pleasure to be here. So, just introduce yourself first. Let's start there. Where? What is your warrior story? How did you end up here? What was your journey? Well, I mean, at the very beginning, I was in a family, just a lower middle class family in living in the middle of nowhere in uh, Canada. And, um, you know, my parents were living paycheck to paycheck. If they wanted something, they had to save for months in order to, to do something. If uh, the car broke down, you know, and it cost like $500 to repair the car, then, you know, they would be struggling for a while uh, to, to make that. And, um, and I knew that's not what I wanted for myself. Um, and I, and I, I've seen, I saw other people that they were, they were enjoying, they seemed to be enjoying life anyway, a little bit more than uh, my family was and uh, traveling and all of that. And I knew I wanted something more for myself. And again, you know, I don't want to blame my uh, my family, my parents. I mean, they did the best they could. They're great parents. And um, but, you know, I, it just kind of set me up to say okay, there is something better. And um, luckily for me, and I know it's not a story for everybody, but luckily for me during my educational, uh, when I went to school and stuff, I was... I was surrounded by great, great teachers, great people that were always saying yes to me so it's just oh i wanted to do a play and then they say oh, oh yeah okay we'll help you do a play and then we'll help you do this and we'll you know so i was surrounded by people that were always supporting me and that was always kind of like my mindset i said but if i do something if i ask them to do something um uh, then you know i can find support i can always find somebody that's going to support me and that's and that's true so even if you right now you feel like you're not surrounded by people that are willing to support you, find the right people that are going to support you. Um, and so anyway, so uh, fast track obviously uh, to uh, university and, and all of that. And uh, I found some uh, a person, a mentor that was uh, just a regular. Uh, he was a real estate investor. He was very successful, but he was also just a regular community college teacher. And I knew that, you know, I just kind of latched on to him and I said, well, you need to teach me everything. <laughs> you know, I, this is what I want. Again, it's just a regular college teacher and not not money. He didn't inherit any money or anything like that. He's just built uh, his apartment building, the 36 unit apartment building from scratch. And he basically mentored me. And uh, that's when I, second year of university, that's when I bought my first apartment building, an eight unit apartment building. And, um, you know, that that's kind of like how my mindset kind of changed that yeah. me with no money down. And uh, I was able to buy that uh, at 18 years old. I was able to buy that eight unit apartment building. And that was really a test. Unfortunately, it was not part of a grand plan to achieve financial freedom or be, uh, you know, I was only 18 years old. I had the, the life in front of me, so I didn't really think that far ahead. But uh, it was a great test and a great um 
shift for me to see that oh i can do you know i i can do make income without having to work at it and um you know and invest in real estate and it just kind of opened more doors for me yeah. in my mind and that uh, and, reading your book and that apartment the, the eight plex that you bought wasn't in the greatest area right oh wasn't no 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 <laughs> <laughs> as you can imagine as you can eight you know eight units no money down i had a vendor take back uh the so we had a i had a first uh, mortgage yeah. done by a credit union i had a couple of banks say no but a credit union kind of like gave me my loan the the rest of the 20 percent was basically was a loan from the seller mm -hmm. uh what they call a vendor take back um and um yeah, so that's kind of how I, I did it, and I remember writing the check for the for the approval for for the application for the loan. It was like one hundred twenty five dollars, and I think I, I had like two hundred bucks in the bank or something like that. And I was like, okay, this this better work, and it was cash flowing at the end. So yeah. it's kind of amazing, but yeah, not, yeah. The, not the greatest area. Well, I can imagine at the age of eighteen, just to buy your first apartment complex, you're not really you don't know what you're doing. Yeah. You're not really looking at the numbers, you're just excited that you have a deal. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But exactly, right? So that's I was just excited that I was able to do something like this and it was yeah. making money and uh but you know, it was not perfect. I mean, some of the mistakes that I made is that uh, I didn't have uh, property management. So yeah. I was a property manager. Yeah. Not a good idea. <laughs> yeah. Especially in a bad area. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 So for a little while, you had a full-time job as you were building up your real estate. Is that correct? Yes, that's right. Yeah. yeah. So most of, after that, I was studying as an actuary So uh, at university. So I graduated, worked as an actuary, and really in working in pension. Uh, and basically, every day I was basically converting a uh, co company pension plan mm -hmm. uh, into 401k. Mm -hmm. So that's really massive ch shift in uh, in risk from the employer to the employee now the employee have to they just basically have a savings account and you know good luck at retirement to, to converting that to uh yeah to a stream of income so um yeah so based on that i mean i didn't feel very good about what i was doing and it's just yeah. like you know and so i i basically quit that and worked in technology for a while uh did very well uh worked as an independent consultant uh, for a while as well also something that not many people were doing at the time what did and, you feel good about when you were doing the 401k conversions? What was it that you didn't feel good about it? Well, because there's a massive difference, right? When you have a corporate pension plan as an employee, uh, you know that at retirement, I'm going to get, uh, let's say, 2% of my final salary times the numbers of years of service. So if I worked for a company for 25 years, 50% of my final salary is going to be covered by the pension plan. That's what you what you get when you know you're going to get that the the company is responsible for providing that to you so they, they hold all the risks so in they invest money they do whatever they need to to do that um so but when you convert that into a 401k you're basically now i'm just going to give you some money and then at retirement you figure it out right and and that's the problem is that people are say they're being told to save a lot of money on 401ks by you know the marketing machine of wall street but then nobody's talking about how is that going to be converted into into a stream of income a passive stream of income and right. that's that's kind of the problem yeah and so that led you into real estate investing and at what point so you worked full time mm -hmm. and so eventually right. You left your your job and did real estate full time, which you now do with your sons. Is that correct? That's right. My son, my wife, and uh, you know, and a few other people. That uh, my extended family, I call them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I get this question a lot, and I debate back and forth between uh, people that I talk with. Is at what point do you leave your job that you're not happy with, or that you know you want to get into real estate investing and you want to do this full time with your family? Mm -hmm. At what point do you make that move? And, and yeah. I don't think that there's a right answer to this. I think there's different theories and, and it and it depends on personality and it depends on your life circumstances and what you've got going on. But I'm yeah. curious for you, at what point did you make that move where you felt comfortable, you had a family and you left this well-paying job to do real estate full time? 
Yeah. Uh, so for me, it was really when I can see the uh, basically the investment that I was making in the real estate, I could see the cash flow coming. Mm -hmm. And I knew that I was about like I was 80 percent like this. This uh, this business was basically covering about 80 percent of my of my living expenses. Yeah. Then I knew that it was it was the right time. If I jump now, then I would be able to make up with my additional effort, I would be able to make up the difference. Yeah. Uh, and what, you know, and one of the things that I did too, is I basically uh, sold my primary residence mm -hmm. uh, and then just invested everything into Martel Turnkey. And uh, so we bought a couple of apartment buildings and we just invested way, we just doubled down on the turnkey business. So all of that kind of accelerated immediately. Were you renting as you were buying rentals? Yes, I was. <laughs> I I'm still am. I still am renting my house. Yeah. It doesn't make any sense. The owner of this house is paying more, is losing money every month. Yeah. Wow. I'm paying, like if I was to buy this house, I well, would you're be... You're in Florida, right? No, I'm in, I'm in Los Angeles. Oh, you're in Los Angeles now. Yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. I moved in 2000 in, um, okay. in California. Yeah. But, yeah the, like, the owner of this house is losing money every month. Yeah. I don't, I don't, ex I can't explain it, but yeah. that's what's going on. They think the people are, some people are investing for appreciation. I guess that's what the owner of this house is, uh, is thinking about. Yeah. But this is, uh, this is a wonderful house. I have a view of the ocean. I just like, you know, rooftop yeah. patio, the whole thing. And it's just the best house I've ever lived in. And, uh, it's, I wouldn't be able to, I, I wouldn't be able to buy this house, but I can rent it. Does that make sense? Yeah. So, so your living expenses are lower right now renting the house. Then. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. By a significant, I, probably half the, mm -hmm. the cost, close to half the yeah. cost. And it's because of, well, you're in LA. <laughs> Is that yes. part of the country? I yeah, don't, that's right. It wouldn't be the case over here in Florida, but you, you're that's in a right. geographic location. That's true. That's true. So some, some areas definitely it doesn't, it wouldn't make sense to rent. Yeah. Uh, it would be much makes much more sense to uh, to buy a property right. and be cheaper. But here is just like people yeah. that they want to invest in. Uh, they think it's, things are going to appreciate, you know, tremendously and all that. So, but so yeah. you got to eighty percent basically of your salary with the cash flow that you were making from real estate. And at that point, mm -hmm. you said, "I'm done. I'm going to go full time real estate and build up this business." Yeah. Um, and I think there's different ways of leaving that corporate job. I know people who just burn their boats. Like if you burn your boats, you have to take the island, right? And so they were yeah. forced to they were forced to make it in real estate because it was their only option at that time. Mm -hmm. I also know people who went to part time in their job and then did real estate part time until they felt comfortable um, replacing real estate full time, and yeah. then. You know, people like you who were just about there with real estate, the income coming in, almost about to replace your salary. And again, I don't know if there's any real, if there's any better way to do it. But I do know that there is a mental shift that has to take place no matter That's right. which way you go, whether you burn your ships and just leave your corporate job now or you ease your way into it or you get to the point where like cash flow is basically exceeding my salary. I'm good now. There mm -hmm. is a mentality shift that has to take place when you leave that quote unquote safe paycheck and, and I don't yeah. think it's safe at all. I think the safest paycheck is the paycheck that you create for yourself. Exactly. And, and I, I started reading your book and it is like the foundation is on mindset. So absolutely. what was your mindset when you shifted from your full-time job to real estate, having a family, having a mm -hmm. wife, kids and, and expenses and responsibilities? Mm -hmm. Yes. Uh, so I think there are a couple of mind shifts, right? So um, uh, the first one I think is about kind of like, if you know that you're going to be investing in real estate, that you're going to be a real estate investor, the first mind shift is that you want to be, you in your mind, you want to be a real estate investor first. Mm. And then your job is something that you do to yeah. become a real estate investor. It's kind of like if you're an actor, and then you ask, you are asked the, the barista, they said, what do you do? I'm an actor. 
but I'm, I'm making coffee right now just to pay for my bills. So that's kind of like the, the attitude you want to have. You want to be the actor. You want to be the investor first. And then when you introduce yourself uh, to meetups and stuff like that, you want to say, ah, I'm a real estate investor and, you know, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then, yeah, I do this thing on the side, but, you know, but most people is the other way around. They say, I do my job, but I'm a real estate investor on the side. Yeah, so yeah. that's that's the wrong about that, Eric, is when I first started out, I was a physical therapist. And for years, I told people that I was a physical therapist, but I invest in real estate. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. To the point where I wasn't even practicing physical therapy anymore. And I was still telling people that I was a physical therapist because I hadn't yet transitioned to that identity. Yeah. I am a real estate investor. It took me years to start telling people that I was a real estate investor. Yeah, yeah. So, so I think that's the first mind shift. That, that's pretty important because I think people kind of associate kind of like what you do. So, and people, uh, you know, I have people call me and stuff like that and say, hey, you know, I have a real estate investor for you. I want somebody that wants to do turnkey buyer, or I want to invest with you, or whatever, because they ask the, people come to you because they know that you are a real estate investor. If right. they think that you are a, a project manager or a consultant or management consultant then they're going to come to you because if people want to help each other so uh, so that's why i think the first is to have the right identity have the right personal brand and your personal brand should be a real estate investor first so that's the first mindset uh, the second mindset i think is also well, for me especially and i think it's important for uh, other people once you have that it's kind of like have a looser relationship with uh with your salary <laughs> <laughs> and by that, I mean that, so so when I worked, I worked as an independent consultant. I would really work back and forth between yeah. uh, independent consultant and full-time employees. And it's just, to me, full-time employees and independent consultant were kind of like this. It didn't really matter. It was kind of the same. It was just, a, in my mind, it was just a contract on how to get paid. Right. Uh, I never felt... Uh, I felt some kind of loyalty uh, either way, whether I was a consultant or not. Uh, but, you know, so have that looser relationship and then you can kind of switch back and forth between between the two without being too, uh, you know, too upset about it. Yeah. And of course, there is uh, the, uh, one other mindset is that once you go in from full time employee into uh, real estate investing and you're, you're going to start to realize that things don't happen on their own. When you work for a company, things are happening and you're kind of like being pulled along, uh, whether you'd like to admit it or not. You're, like, you're being pulled along and you, your success is really determined by everybody in the, in the company. When you're working uh, on your own business, you are driving. If yeah. you're not doing, if you're not pushing, it's not going to happen. Things are not, you know, every once in a while things come to you, but it's really you, you're the driving force and yeah. you have to, you have to push forward. Yeah. So that's the other thing. So you can't be just sitting there and then waiting for things to happen. I see a lot of people that are like uh, deterministic in their approach where they just like, oh, you know, this happened to me and this happened to me or this didn't happen. It was not meant to be and stuff like that. No, you make it. You make yeah. it happen. It's just like not meant to be. Yeah. So. Yeah. I, I think that the biggest choke hold on any business is the business owner, because that is the person who's driving things. Even if you have a team, right? Even if you have a team that's doing different things and I wouldn't be able to do what I do today without my team, but mm -hmm. I'm driving that team constantly. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. And so there is a huge shift there because when you're working for a paycheck, you're driven, but you've got other people who are telling you what to do. All of a sudden, you have to tell you what to do. Yeah, exactly. And that can be really hard because we are our ultimate barrier to mm -hmm. success. We get in our way more than anyone else. Mm -hmm. uh, and I, I remember when I replaced my, well, I, I left my job as a physical therapist. I left the corporate world and I was a stay at home mom. And going back to having that support piece, that's huge. I mean, I had my husband's support saying, OK, yeah, this is going to be tough for a little while because we're going down to one salary. We're growing a business, but I think you could replace your income and we could grow mm -hmm. this thing. And so that was the driving force that I had that support who was really they were depending on me. Mm -hmm. right? I had yeah. my husband, I had my kids, I had a lot of people depending on me at that time. And 
I remember one of the biggest mind, one of the biggest things I had to get my mind around was creating my own schedule. Because uh, before I had a schedule, I would come into the office, I would have patients on my schedule, I would have meetings set up by my supervisor, I would have my allotted time for paperwork, and then I would go home. And that yeah. was my that was my schedule. And all of a sudden it was like I was home and I was like, holy crap, what do I do now? <laughs> How do I start my day? Yeah. <laughs> And when do you stop your day? You talk about this in your book, really about <laughs> yeah. prioritizing your goal. Like you have to yeah. have goals set in place yeah. because if you don't have goals set in place and you don't have a plan set in place, you're going to spin your wheels and you're not going to have any plan each day. Like now yeah. each day I wake up and I look at my Google calendar and it's like hour to hour because I know exactly yeah. what I need to do to get me moving forward to meet that financial goal. Or yeah. that business goal, and and I know you talk a lot about goals in in your book. Yeah, yeah, and also daily practice. So goals, I think, is yeah, obviously very important. And I talk about like fiat goals, which is basically something that's going to help you drive and help you focus. It's got also something that's going to help you know when you're you're kind of uh, veering away, like you're doing, you're taking action, and you you feel once you have the right goal, you feel that okay, well, this is not in line with my goal, so. I can I can still do it, but it's it's not in line with what I'm trying to do, and um, and really thinking about your goal, your strategy, and all of that, and having a daily practice, I think is important, um, especially yeah. when you you get started. But even even today is really kind of like looking at your at your business, looking at what you're doing, and um, and determining kind of like how can I make it better? How do I tweak what we're doing? Um, because it's because you you have the right strategy doesn't mean that things are not changing. Uh, mm -hmm. You know the, everything is changing all the time. The interest rate is changing. The government is changing. The tax laws are changing. It's just like yeah. And it's just you know you're kind of playing a game, and then the rules change <laughs> all the time. Yeah. And then you have a pandemic, and then you have this. You can't uh, you know so all these things and price of lumber quadruple and you know what do you do there <laughs> a contractors built me a, a fence with pressure treated wood and i was like about fell off my chair when they gave me the invoice yeah, yeah. <laughs> um no it, it is and i that word game it is kind of like a game and it makes yeah. it fun um because i think when i first got into real estate investing i realized how many problems i was running into Especially in the beginning, but even now, like every single day, there's problems that I've got to solve. Yeah. Um, yeah. My contractor's got an issue. The lender has an issue. The acquisition, right? We're in this inspection period, and there might be an issue. There's always issues coming up. And I remember in the beginning, it really dragged me down because I was like, "Man, did I get into the right industry?" Because I feel like every day I wake up and there's problems. Mm -hmm. I remember my husband saying, this is this is the industry that we're in. Like you have to shift your mindset to, oh man, another problem. Instead of thinking of it that way, like, oh, this is great. I can put my Sherlock Holmes hat on and solve this problem. And it's challenging mm -hmm. and it's gonna make me grow and I'm gonna learn from it. And so now I like wake up every day, like, okay, I'm just gonna be a problem solver. Like that is mm -hmm. my job now. I go in and I and I and I solve things, yeah. right? And and that that was a hard piece for me to get around too. Is that it's a game, right? Mm -hmm. When you play Monopoly, you're constantly um, you're constantly shifting your strategy. You're looking at the board. You're looking at your next move. You're wondering what the other person's going to do, like you know the government. <laughs> what, what <is> it <laughs> yeah, exactly. What should I do with my rental portfolio? I have this, you know, plan to keep these properties. Maybe now I liquidate them because I've got another property because I want to move up, or maybe I don't want to do that because this yeah. is good turn. Like you're constantly playing all these different chess pieces, and it can be really, really fun, right? Yeah. You start mm -hmm. to think about it as a game. Yeah, yeah. So I think if people are, yeah, exactly. So I think problems for me, I think it's uh, you have to embrace problems and issues yeah. and stuff like that. I mean, they're not necessarily fun, but the, to me, like I think of it as you know, if it was that e if it was easy, then everybody would be doing it, mm -hmm. uh, would be doing the the rehab and stuff like that. The other thing too is that this is also why I recommend um, to a lot of people that are full have a full time job is to start with turnkey rental properties. 
because all these problems, all the contractors, you don't have to worry about all of that. I mean, you're getting a property that is uh, that is rent ready or has a tenant in it. I mean, the properties that we sell, they have a tenant in them. It's cash flowing. We connect you and ha hold your hand throughout the whole process. We introduce you to the insurance company, the property management, the bank, the you know everything. So you don't have you know you don't have to worry about it. You can get like twenty houses a year if you want. And this is uh, this is why up until you get into that eighty percent of your passive income is actually covering oh, when your passive income is actually covering eighty percent of your of your living expenses. Once you're there, then you can go into more involved right. strategies like the one you're doing, which is like involves like working with contractors and you yeah. know and doing all that all that work. Because yeah, the, when you work with contractors or when you start renovating the house, yeah, you you're gonna end up with some you know some problems that you didn't see, nobody saw the inspection inspector didn't see it and all of that, and it could be, yeah, yeah. Some people don't like it. Some people don't like surprises. Right. Some people don't like surprises, and that's where the safer investments come into play, right? Um, and you know, turnkey. When you talk about turnkey properties, um, doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have a whole bunch of money to buy turnkey mm -hmm. properties. No. Um, you know, going back to your first example when you were eighteen, buying this eightplex with two hundred bucks in your in your bank account. It can be done. Like you can buy your first property without a lot of money out of your pocket, um, and you can also buy a turnkey. We've we've bought properties where it literally for the first five years we didn't put a dime into them, mm -hmm. um, and and they just they came to us as opportunities. Right? We saw it. Yeah. We we realized that it was an opportunity to purchase it on terms with owner financing. Um, we knew that it didn't need a lot of work, and we didn't put a lot of work into it the first few years. Um, so even if you don't have a lot of funds or capital to work with, you can still invest in turnkey proper in turnkey rentals. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, so the properties that we sell right now, you basically need like twenty five, thirty thousand mm -hmm. dollars. That may be a lot too much money for some people, but you mm -hmm. know, this is pretty low entry uh, kind of like capital that you need to uh, to get started, mm -hmm. and you're gonna cash flow probably around two hundred and fifty dollars a month on that. So, you know, you're going to be around like the, the 10, 12 percent cap on cap return, uh, cash on cash return, cap on cap, cash on cash yeah. return. And um, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I know it's early uh, for you over there. <laughs> <laughs> Not too early. I already had my ocean swim this morning. So. <laughs> yeah, very good. So yeah. talk to me a little bit about working with your family. So now you've employed your son, your wife, you've got extended family working for you. How's that been? It's uh, it's fantastic for yeah. me anyway. Uh, that's been my dream. Uh, I don't know. I don't know how do you feel about it, but um, yeah, I'll give <laughs> you my. <laughs> you should you should interview them to find out. But yeah. um, for me, like yeah, that was my dream. I think I have a I have an amazing amazing family. Um, I just. Uh, at the big and really at the beginning, when in 2000, when I moved here, I had like a, a ton of money in the stock market as stock options because I was working full time for a high tech company. And then the dot com crash, mm -hmm. uh, 2001, kind of basically wiped uh, most of it out. I had diversified, but I diversified in the same asset class. I diversified in stock. So the whole stock market crashed. So you, you just so it was not good. I said I want to have something that is going to be uh, that I have control over. Like I want to have a business that's going to generate passive income. That's going to I can control that. I know what's going on. I don't mind if it goes down if it's not doing well. But I want to know about it. Not like the stock market or businesses uh, on Wall Street that you know I don't know exactly how well they're doing until it's too late. Um, so we did a lot of different businesses. So, and you know, I was working full time, and then my wife was uh, is an entrepreneur as well. So I would say, okay, well, and she had some ideas. She did like a low carb grocery store. Uh, mm -hmm. We had a gourmet sauce company. We had like a, a catering business. We had uh, all kinds of different things, and then, so she was involved heavily in that. And uh, my kids were also involved in that as well, and they saw what we were doing. So they they their lives was. Uh, you know, when I looked at my parents, all I saw nine to five, not for me. 
and then what they saw is like oh this is exciting this is like constant something new something new another business and all of that and also what they saw is that we when we went into these businesses i we never lost any money in these businesses we always kind of you know broke even or made a little bit of money mm -hmm. um so that's what they saw as well. They, their perception of risk is very different because they saw, well, as long as you are doing things a certain way, as long as you're adapting to your uh, to the, your environment, to the the, the the business condition, you can kind of like, okay, you can do that. You you are in control of your expenses, your you know cer certain things, and uh, so that's what they saw and uh they saw growing up and, and that's kind of like how they they see business so they're not they don't have the fear that uh, most people have mm -hmm. and uh, yeah and eventually what happened is that uh you know my two sons basically uh wanted to do real estate investing i was working like uh, i had a major uh management consulting contract uh and it i was working like 60 80 hours a week and I was making like uh, a lot of money, <laughs> paid by hour. I'm glad I was not full time on that one. Uh, but uh, it's still, it was. Uh, I was just the. It was really time. I didn't have too much time, so I had still some time in the evening, in the weekends, and all of that. And um, yeah, so my my son, my older son especially, basically, you know, took over, and we talked about, ah, oh, yeah, we're gonna do, uh, you know, we're gonna do turn turnkey or we're going to do a passive income portfolio in memphis and cleveland and all of that and he called like you know 200 <laughs> realtors and all of that and did all the calls all the the things yeah. and yeah and um so he did all the all the groundwork for all of that he actually flew there met the people and uh, you know he was i think he was like 20 he just graduated from university so he was probably like 21 or something like that wow. and it's just like crazy and it's like yeah, proud papa yeah so and you know, because of his work and all of that like he he basically my family basically allowed me to now quit my job like a few years later and yeah. uh be full-time on that so it's kind of it's uh it's amazing to me that yeah you know that's kind of like i expect i was ex i i expected to be the one to do that but uh you know, it's when it's your kids that are actually helping you, yeah. uh, you know, That's get true. out of the full time of the, the, the rat race. It's amazing. Yeah. It's interesting because um, our oldest is going into his senior year of high school and we've been really talking to him about like, what do you want to do when you go to college? And he doesn't know. He just doesn't know what he's into. But he sees what we're doing and he has an interest in working in the business. And we're like, well, we want you to go to college because we want you to have that experience. And here's all the different things that you could do. You could go to art for architecture. You could go for engineering. You could go for construction management because these are all the things that we need in our business. Yeah, yeah. And so it's interesting because now he's starting to look at universities that have architecture because now he's thinking, OK, I can get a degree and then and it's a it's a it's a degree that I can use to help mm -hmm. you in the yeah, business. Exactly. Yeah. And so it's just it's just interesting seeing how it is playing a factor in his decision making because he sees that he doesn't want to just go to a job. He sees what we're doing and he thinks, okay, I could probably go and get a degree in something that could be useful for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. That's exciting. So I'm like, great. Yeah to have an in-house architect soon <laughs> <laughs> yeah i mean that's great yeah yeah so, so so that's yeah that's fantastic that so and this is part of it i mean this is part of like changing the mindset early like a young person yeah. like that i mean this is uh it's, it's dramatic it's a huge yeah. change right i mean when we get older it's kind of it's kind of hard to do these kinds of mind shift and but you can still do them but yeah you know and when yeah. you're young it's, it's a lot easier. Yeah, I can say to the most rewarding part, at least for me, um, is leaving that full time job and doing this um, pretty part time for a lot of years because I was a stay at home mom. So I couldn't do mm -hmm. it full time. I couldn't do real estate full time. So I had to figure out a way to do it part time, but to replace my full time salary. Yeah. Um, and so I've always been a working 
mom. I take the kids everywhere with me. If we have to go to a rehab, I'll take them with me. Um, if we've got to go take a look at a house on a weekend, we'll take them, you know, out with us and do something fun wherever we're going. Yeah. We've always just kind of integrated it. And <laughs> the other day, my son, uh, my our middle son, who is nine now, so he's getting to that point where he's really starting to like become aware of a lot of things of life in general. And yeah. um, and he was telling me one day that like he has a friend in class whose parents work a lot. And so we were talking about that, how a lot of parents just they have to work a lot and yeah. they can't be there at three o'clock to pick um, kids up from school. And um, he was working out with my husband. Uh, so they've started a workout routine in the mornings. Because my nine-year-old wants to start working out and get muscles. Every <laughs> nine-year-old boy's goal. <laughs> and my, my husband has a, a gym in the in the uh, in the uh, uh, garage, so they've been going out there and working working out. And my nine-year-old said to him the other day, he said, "Dad, uh, I'm so glad that you're not one of those dads who works all the time, and that like I get to do this with you." And it's funny because my husband kind of thought to himself, don't I work all the time? <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Funny, we do work a lot, but we work alongside with them. It's like we're working, yeah, yeah. living at the same time. And it was just really heartwarming to hear him say that because he's like aware of the fact that because we own our own business and we work from home, that we can work and be with them at the same time and mm -hmm. integrate it and, mm -hmm. and have the time to spend with them to do the things that we want to do because we're setting our own schedule. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So it's uh, having the flexibility and stuff like that. That's always something that I was, you know, that I was looking for. Like, you know, what else am I going to do? Like, I don't, I'm, I'm not going to watch TV for, uh, you know. And uh, so, you know, I want to, I want to be productive. I want to be working. I want to be creating for the rest of my life. Um, but I want the flexibility. I want to be able to. Okay, well, I'm going to go. I'm going to go to Europe for three months and. <laughs> You know, I'm going to work for, uh, over there for three months or I'm going to go to Mexico or something like that. And um, so that's the flexibility and also being home. I mean, it's like, to me like I'm, I was always, um, always enjoyed that. Yeah. And uh, in working with my family, having, you know, like I'm actually sharing. Uh, my son has actually moved in for a, a short period of time uh, because his, room, his roommates kind of like went separate ways and stuff like that. So he's actually sharing the office here. He's facing me on the other side. Uh, and then my wife is on the, the other office on the other side. So working from home is uh, just fantastic. Yeah. My younger son is actually in Memphis handling the construction, started Mem uh, Martel Construction in Memphis. And... You know, then we go and uh, do uh, corporate meetings in, uh, yeah. you know, in, <laughs> in Hawaii, in Costa Rica or whatever. So, cool. so it's a yeah. lot of fun. A lot of fun. Well, awesome. So, you know, guys, I don't know what the right answer is for how you leave your, your, your full-time job, if that is your goal, to start real estate. I don't think that there is a correct way or a better way. I do know that if you are interested in getting more time back and getting into real estate investing that um, it doesn't matter which way you do it, whether you burn your, your, your boats now and try to take the Island because you have to, or you, you ease your way into it. Um, I think the most important thing is just getting started. And I would highly recommend you um, going and reading Eric's book, because that is a perfect way to get started, because honestly, it all starts with mindset. It all starts with a mentality shift. If you don't make that mentality shift, you're never going to make uh, that transition that you want to make. So I would highly recommend um, Eric's Eric's book. Eric, where can they find that book? Where can they it's on Amazon. Stop trading your time for money. Um, yeah, you can find it there. You can also look on my uh, on my website, martelleric.com, and then you can see there's a link for the book there. Perfect. Yep. And if, um, if people want to get in touch with you, uh, if they have any questions or they just want to connect, where's the best way for them to do that? So Instagram, E underscore Martel. That's a good way to do it. Uh, otherwise, on Facebook, it's eric.martel.ca. I can, I can have the same. <laughs> I tried. <laughs> <laughs> All and, right, well, uh, I'll, yep. I'll let you get back to your corporate meetings with your family. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and uh, thank you so much again for coming on the show. Well, thank you, Carrie. It was a pleasure. All right, you guys, remember, you are only one deal away. We'll see you on the next episode.